Hi, thanks so much for joining me. This is Jackie M. Apa kabar semua? Nama saya Jackie M. And I am uh, very grateful to Lynn for organizing this. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am a former restaurant owner based here in Sydney, Australia, but born and raised in Malaysia from Seremban. So any orang negeri over there, please say hello and let me know uh, where you're watching from, whether you're in Melbourne or Sydney or anywhere else in Australia. I'm so happy to have you here. George Lee. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, um, guys, I'm very, very privileged to be able to do this. Um, I'm going to actually just show you a very quick and easy dish. This is something we call mi hai lam in Malaysia. And in all honesty, you know, growing up in Malaysia, I came to Australia back in the 80s when I was a teenager. But in Malaysia, I didn't really remember eating mi hai lam. So any of you who, who remember mi hai lam, please let me know. I know some Hainanese people, because mi hai lam just means Hainanese noodles. I know some Hainanese people who've never heard of mi hai lam. So it's quite interesting. But the one time I got to eat it, the first time I got to eat it was when I went to Kuala Kangsar in Pera, which is uh, Malaysia's silver state. And I was invited there by Tourism Malaysia a few years ago. And I had this beautiful mi hai lam at this kopi tiam run by Hananese people, but it was halal. And because I don't eat pork myself, I, I really, really liked it. And subsequently, I learned to make it. I was invited to a separate trip by a different uh, hotel chain, and they taught me how to make mi hai lam. So we, we're going to make that. And the reason why I picked this dish is because, like I said, it's very, very easy to make. And um, you don't need a lot of complicated ingredients as well, because I know what it's like living overseas if you're Malaysian, maybe sometimes, you know, depending on which part of Australia you're in, you may actually struggle to find some of the ingredients. So hari ini kita akan buat mi hai lam. Uh, mi hai lam uh, yang uh, kita pakai uh, mi. The kind of mi you want is something that's skinny, right? So if you have a look here, this is the mi that we're using. Rupanya macam Hokkien mi. So if you go to your Asian grocery store in the refrigerated section or even to your local supermarket in the refrigerated section, you always can find Hokkien mi. But mi hai lam, the kind of noodles you want is a little bit skinnier. So better if you can find that, but if not, just use Hokkien mi, okay? So this is uh, mi hai lam. In Chinese, uh, obviously in Malaysia, the Chinese in Malaysia have different names or ingredients to the Chinese here in Australia, right? So I've heard the Chinese here called this uh, yao min, which means uh, oily noodles, all right, or noodles with oil, all right? Um, so if you're not sure, go to your Asian grocery store and ask for yao min, right? Which is, like I said, Cantonese for oily noodles. So I know people get very confused about the kind of noodles you want, right? Because even when I say egg noodles, there are lots of different types of egg noodles, but you want to look for the ones that are oily, okay? like this. So look for ones that look like they're quite solid. They're not soft and spongy, but they're quite solid and they're oily. Okay, so that's the noodles we want. And the other one, the other ingredient that we want is um, we want some carrots. Mihai lam, apa kabar? So these are some carrots that I've just sliced up over here. And of course, you can put other kinds of like you can put chicken in, you can put a uh, fish cake, here I've got some uh, fish balls that I cut into slices over here. And the other one, I've got some prawns, right? These are banana prawns in Australia. And yeah, guys, please say hello and let me know where you're watching from. Um, I'm very, very excited to be able to stream this. But Lynn, the idea originally was for us to do a split screen um, broadcast, but we were having all kinds of technical problems. Uh, you know what it's like with technology and the internet and all that. So it's a little bit uh, tricky. Um, and you are okay yeah hi and anyone from the Grisom Bilan say hello so um <laughs> but otherwise tell me which part of Malaysia you're from originally okay so kitada udang sini so we're just going to cut it in half the vein in the middle but you can use like i say any anything you want if you're vegetarian use um and use tofu right so there are lots and lots of different ways to do this uh, the other ingredient we want is some um, Chinese vegetables. So we've got some choy sum over here. All right. So hopefully if you're Malaysian, you should be familiar with most Chinese vegetables. Aussies get very confused. So sometimes they call this uh, bak choy. This is not bak choy. This is choy sum. Right. Uh, but you can use any kind of veggies. The last time I made this, I used uh, Chinese broccoli or kai lam. Right. So we've got this. And we're just going to cut this into chunks. Okay, so the other thing I want to mention as well, when you're cooking, uh, when you're cooking noodles, 
don't try and cook too much at a time, all right? So sometimes I think people try and cook for a whole family of like eight people or something like that. So they end up with a big pot. It's very hard to cook when you're cooking for uh, for big groups. What you want to do is do what like the hawkers in Malaysia do. They do usually when they're cooking something um, to, to sell, they cook like one or two portions each, okay? That will help, make, help you to be able to cook it faster and also make it like... Um, more manageable as well. It's easier to stir and all that. All right. So we're going to do this very, 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 very quickly. And mi hai lam is like pretty much the easiest dish. I mean, my my specialty from my business. Uh, hey Pamela, how you doing? Haja uh, kabar. And who else have I missed? Yeah. But yeah, just say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. So the ingredients that we want are very simple. We want oyster sauce. Uh, okay. Everyone knows oyster sauce. If you're vegetarian, there's vegetarian oyster sauce you can get as well. But this one ingredient, Aussies, I think, get quite confused about this. Okay. This is a this is what we call thick soy sauce, uh, kicap pukat, right? Growing up in Malaysia, we call it kicap pukat, right? In Chinese, we want to call it haksi, uh, which means uh, black soy sauce. But nowadays, it's marketed as cooking caramel, which is very confusing. All the brands that you see nowadays, they call it uh, caramel masakan, right? So Aussies, they, they see you using this, they think uh, this is a uh, sweet soy sauce. They think this is kicap manis. This is different from kicap manis, all right? Uh, kicap manis is uh, more sweet, and it's less dark and less thick, okay? So this kicap uh, pekat is what you want. So if you're not familiar with it, you look at it. Um, it's quite, it's very, very, it's black and it's very, very treacly and dark, all right? Kalau tak dapat ni, you can make it yourself. You can cuba buat sendiri lah. Use some uh, gula melaka, melt the gula melaka, burn the gula melaka, and then add some soy sauce, okay? Then stir it. Uh, add a little bit of water and then thicken it a bit, you know, uh, add some, uh, uh, some some tapioca starch to thicken it, okay? So speaking of tapioca starch, you can use corn starch as well. So that's corn starch and we want some some chicken powder, all right? Uh, the prisa yum. I think that's what it's called, prisa yum, right? And a little bit of sugar if you want. So these are the ingredients you want. Everybody should have this in your kitchen, guys. All right. So if you're starting out on Asian cooking or you're familiar with Asian cooking, you should at the very least have oyster sauce, oyster sauce, and kitapa cut. All right. And soy sauce too, if you have it. Okay. In the meantime, this is heating up. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, cook some garlic. So I'll put some garlic in here. It's just minced fresh garlic. So this, like I said, this is the easiest, easiest. Um, Malaysian noodle dish you can attempt that will really impress your friends. I, I, I promise you, if you do it right, okay? So we've got the garlic here, and we're going to add a little bit of oil in here. Okay, so I've only got a little bit of garlic. Usually I prefer to add a little bit more, okay? And by the way, guys, like I say, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. And um, yeah, and tell me about your favorite Malaysian dish. I'd love to find out what it is. My specialty is actually char kway teow, but char kway teow is a little bit tricky to make, especially when you're starting out. And also, I think usually, because my audience is Aussie, sometimes they don't really understand kway teow. So they confuse kway teow with pad thai, and they'll, they'll go and buy pad thai and ask me if they've got right noodles, you know. So mi hai lam is easy, but like the, the, the noodles is like macam uh, Hokkien noodles, right? Um, but hopefully you can attend this yourself at home. Um, you can't really see much here, but this is what I'm doing. I'm just sauteing the garlic. Uh, it's important you don't burn it, okay? I think uh, a lot of the time people, people run the risk of burning the garlic. So you just want to actually bring out the flavor, make it a little bit yellow, right? But don't burn it, okay? So we've got this going. And also Chinese vegetables, um, if you're just starting out, it's important to know. They don't take long to cook, all right? So don't overcook them. But the other thing as well, the stems are thicker than the leaves. So either cut the stems into thinner slices, right? Or, and or, actually put the stems in first before you put the, uh, the leaves in, okay? So we're just sauteing this. I'm gonna put the noodles in, okay? Mm. 
no, add some water. We want quite a lot of water, okay? Because we're going to actually simmer this and reduce it, okay? So we've got about two cups of water in here, two and a half cups of water. Just increase the heat. So, so far you've got the, the water. If you have stock, put stock in, that's better, more flavorsome. But if you have water, just water is fine, okay? Uh, so you've got the garlic, you've got the noodles, you've got the water, you're going to add the sauce de ram, right? This is what we call sauce de ram in Malaysia, oyster sauce. And if you're allergic to seafood, the last time I did this, uh, 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 this woman said she's allergic to seafood, use the vegetarian oyster sauce, right? it's not bad, okay? So oyster sauce, lepas tu, uh, kicap pekat, all right? So this is the uh, thick soy sauce, like I said, if you're not familiar with it, a lot of Aussies, they automatically think, like I said, they think it's a uh, kicap manis, okay? It's very frustrating to me because like when I have my Malaysian restaurant, the Aussies will ask or when I make the char kway tia or whatever, they'll ask for kicap manis and they'll pour kicap manis all over my char kway tia. It just kills me, you know? <laughs> all right, so we're going to put some kicap paka, right? But not too much, okay? Because uh, if you know KL Hokkien Mee, if anyone's from KL or Surumban or that sort of stuff, Everybody will know KL Hokkien Mee. You know KL Hokkien Mee? KL Hokkien Mee is really dark, right? It's like, much I'm like, hit them, right? But Mee Hai Lam, apart from the noodle size, uh, Mee Hai Lam is lighter in color. It looks brown, okay? So that's the, the difference. But, all right, so we've got the water, we've got the, we've got the, the, the sauce. And you can add a little bit of chicken powder if you want, okay? This is like a, what we call in Malaysia magic powder, okay? Just a little bit is enough, okay? Don't forget, we're actually wanting to reduce the, the water. So we want to bring this to a boil quickly. Okay, let's cover it for a bit. And we wanna throw in some carrots because the carrots are a little bit harder. So we'll put in the the chicken powder. Let's put a little bit of sugar. The sugar is up to you if you want it. If you don't want to put it in, that's okay. One thing I want to mention, the sauce de ram, the oyster sauce. A lot of people don't realize, right? Um, different brands of oyster sauce, they are different, okay? Some are more salty, some are more sweet. If you buy a Thai brand, I've bought a Thai brand of oyster sauce before, the sauce de ram from Thailand. That was very, very sweet, okay? If it's too, if it's sweet already, you don't have to add sugar. If it's very salty, then maybe add a little bit of sugar. You don't want to make this sweet, okay? Malaysian food, for those of you who are not from Malaysia, I always try and explain because Aussies, they are very familiar with Thai food. Uh, the difference between Thai food and Malaysia, Malaysian food, one of the differences is that Thai food is a lot sweeter, right? That's why a lot of these Thai ingredients, like you buy the sauce tea rum from Thailand and all that, they'll taste sweeter right? Because the Thais like to add sugar to everything. Um, so, but Malaysian food is less sweet, but usually we put a little bit of sugar in our food, all right? So even my curry or something like that, I might put a little bit of uh, maybe one teaspoon of sugar in my curry. Um, but Thai, in Thai, Thai food, they put a lot of palm sugar in their curry, right? Indian food, they don't, they don't like putting sugar in it. <laughs> All right, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so this is boiling now. We're going to let this um, reduce, okay? And let's add the, the prawns and the fish. I'm going to add the stems of the vegetables. And depending on the type of uh, vegetable you put in, like if I, like the other day I made it using, um, what do you call it? Gailan, uh, which is uh, the Chinese uh, broccoli. The stems are quite tough. You want to cook it a little bit longer. If you're using something like very, like, you know, choy sum, you don't need it to cook it that long, okay? But you just got to find out as you, as you go along, okay? So like I said, you want to reduce this. Um, but don't reduce it too much because that's the other thing about mi hai lam. There's a bit of sauce in it. Um, if you know, like I keep comparing it to kale Hokkien Mee because that to me was the famous dish in Malaysia, you know, growing up, you grow up in near KL sort of thing. Everybody knows about kale Hokkien Mee. So that's my, my, my point of reference. Kale Hokkien Mee is a lot thicker as well, a lot less sauce, all right? Um, but the, the cooking method is very similar. 
So just reduce this. And like, if you have more garlic, put more garlic in. I like a lot of garlic in my food. Okay. And okay, guys, well, this is simmering. Well, let's talk a little bit about Ramadan. Ramadan in Malaysia, for those of you who don't know, I uh, mentioned it earlier, it's a big occasion in Malaysia every night at the end, like, you know, coming to the end of the day, all these market stores will uh, start up and people will shop and buy all these beautiful kueh. And uh, the last time I was there, I remember during Ramadan, if you go to Kampong Baru, which is the, uh, the, the little Malay village in the middle of Kuala Lumpur, it's fantastic. You have to go there. But obviously not this year, it's about like, you know, the coronavirus. <laughs> but um, the Kampung Baru, you go and do your shopping there. They have the most beautiful, all kinds of food. They have like satay, they have like kueh, uh, they have uh, roti john and uh, murtaba, everything, right? So everybody buys, uh, like they, they, they buy up a storm and they go home to, um, to, to book a puasa, right? All right, so we want to, like I said, we want to keep reducing this. That's uh, going to be... The idea with this is to let the flavor soak into the noodles and into all the ingredients, okay? So the final result, visually, it doesn't look pretty, all right? It just looks like brown, gooey, uh, gravy and noodles, right? But the flavor is really, really good, okay? So remember, you just want oyster sauce, sauce tea rum, and sauce uh, kicap pekat, right? And then you put a little bit of sugar if you want. Did I put sugar in it? Let me just put a little bit in here, okay? And pepper. If you have pepper, put a bit of pepper in it. Okay, so a bit of pepper. So like I said, this is something you can make very, very easily, very, very quickly. So no need to, uh, you know, it's not like making uh, apani, like, 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 uh, laksa or apani uh, misiam or whatever complicated or roja or whatever this is just like water and noodles and garlic and sauce rum go okay let's put in the rest of these vegetables And yes, I'd love to, uh, and thanks for sharing Ch Chari Makan, uh, George, really appreciate it. <laughs> thanks. And like I said, this is uh, the perfect dish for people who are just starting out Malaysian cooking, all right? What I like to do is to uh, show people how to cook Malaysian food without intimidating them. So I, I take some shortcuts um, and also I try and make the ingredients as simple as possible, but without compromising on the, the, the flavor, all right? So best we can. And if you've lived, if you've never run a Malaysian restaurant, I found that when I had my Malaysian restaurant, a lot of the, 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 the harshest critics, I guess is one way to put it, are the Malaysians who come overseas, but then they complain, much I'm like, uh, oh, the laksa do that somewhere, much I'm like what we used to have in whatever, or you use the wrong type of noodles. But people, even Malaysians don't actually realize that Malaysian food is very diverse. So if you come from Sarawak, your laksa is different. You come from Penang, your laksa is different. You come from Kuala Kangsa, uh, laksa Kuala Kangsa is very unique, you know. Uh, laksa Kelantan is very different. But a lot of Malaysians, when they come from all these different parts of Malaysia, they don't actually know that, right? I didn't know that. When I came to, when I came to Australia, I didn't realize the chak kui tiao I knew was very dark and they used the wide noodles and they had uh, Hokkien mee in it as well. And then when I came to Australia and I tried to learn how to make cha kui tiao, I saw in this cookbook a picture of Penang cha kui tiao, and I thought that the cookbook was wrong. So even like um, even Malaysians, even we Malaysians who grew, uh, who grew up in Malaysia, we don't know everything about our food, okay? So that's one way for me to tell you guys is um, to be a little bit kind of like open-minded <laughs> when you try Malaysian food overseas, right? Depending on the um the part of malaysia that the business owner comes from it will impact the, uh, the the kind of dishes they come up with okay so what i've done here this is a tapioca starch you can use corn starch as well the starch is for thickening up your food all right just add a little bit of water mix it up just pour it in and stir it in 
Okay, that's it. Okay, and you're going to find that like um, it's going to thicken up a little bit more as well. Okay, but don't reduce it to the point where you think, oh, that's it. Okay, that looks perfect because, like I said, it's going to thicken up some more. If you leave it too late, your noodles, your mihai lam, will end up too dry. Okay, so this is basically what you want it to look like. And if you think it should be darker, put a little bit more kitapuka, right? So let's put a little bit more in if you like and like i said if you want to learn how to make kitab yourself you can't find it in the shops right the easiest way gula melaka melt it by putting it in a saucepan non-stick saucepan and and just cook it till it melts uh don't panic wait till it burns a little bit okay but i'm like um has that little bit of like burnt taste in it and then you add um Soy sauce. Add soy sauce. Same amount of soy sauce as the gula melaka. Lepas tu tambah sikit like air. Uh, lepas tu you you make it a little bit thick lah. Uh, add a little bit of tapioca starch plus water and thicken it. So that's kind of like the 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 homemade version of kitab pekat. Only if you can't get a hold of it. Okay, so. Because, like I say, a lot of people living overseas, I think in Australia it's not too bad. But if you live in places like, you know, some parts of America, Europe and all that, they can't find a lot of these ingredients, okay? Okay, so there you go. Let me just get a plate and serve it up. Okay. There you go. That's your Mihai Lam. I'm gonna take a photo and I'll post it underneath the uh this video. But that's it, really easy. So who's gonna try and make it? Let me know. I'd love to see, I'd love to see your photos. If you try to make this at home, I'd love to see your photos. And Lynn, uh, again, Lynn is the uh, founder of AMTV, but Lynn will share the recipe out to you as well because I've created a downloadable PDF that you can actually just uh, download yourself. So I'll send that to Lynn and Lynn will share it with you guys. But thank you so much for joining me. It's a very, yeah, I'm sorry about the technical problems you were having earlier, but I don't know what was going on. But uh, we figured it was easier just for me to go live alone without Lynn. <laughs> but thanks again, Lynn, uh, for hosting this cook along, this um, live Ramadan broadcast. And uh, Slamat uh, Bukapasa, yeah? <laughs> okay, I will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Ciao.